the simple life. Don't take on anything can't be handled from the seat of a rowboat. Don't owe a soul anything can't be paid by the month or by mail. The fishing just isn't what it used to be. But what is? Can't remember what day it is half the time. That's good, the way it should be. Chrissy here is the absolute ideal companion. Understands English perfectly, doesn't speak a word of it. Hello, Chrissy. How are you, pup? Peace and quiet. Almost. My! Nothing like a day alone with nature to put a smile on a man's heart, now is there? I thought you'd be gone. You hoped I'd be gone. I cooked you some supper. It's on low in the oven. Wish you wouldn't do that, Rowena. Is that a fact? Puts a hex on the fishing. Your cooking casts a spell over the entire lake. It's not my cooking. A lawyer coming to your court with a spear like that, Albert Sidney, you would have him checked for lunacy. Is that a fact? You, you just give off a mean aura lately. Fish can tell a mile away. Yeah, I wish I had time to hear more of this. You've gone from being no nonsense to being nasty. Can't argue with him. Ever since Victoria passed on and you quit the bench. Well, Victoria didn't pass on. She died. And I didn't quit the bench. I retired. Most men 58 are just getting the steam up. I call it quitting. You call it what you want. What'd you pick for supper? Surprise yourself. Oh, I almost forgot. Your godson, Billy Wendell, called and asked if you're going to be home later. I hope you told him no. Now, if you want me to lie for you, you're going to have to make prior arrangements. Make it a standing room.
Sorry, Tracy. Uncle Albert. Now, would you ever play any music you can whistle? You're trespassing. You're disturbing the peace. And I'm not your uncle. Sounds like I'm on shaky ground here, huh? How are you, Billy? How's Loreen and the kids? Okay. Men of good character generally home with the families at this hour. Used to be I was welcome to drop by any time. What can I do for you? A donation for school? Roll away bed for company? I need some legal help. <laughs> no, no. I'm out of that business. Not the kind you pay for. Well, tell me about the other kind, Billy. It's old G. Old Gaspard Pennywell? G. Old Uncle G. So? Old G letting his hogs run in your field? My G ain't kept a hog on its place in 20 years, you know that. Billy, it's getting late. Well, G come to me with a problem with the defense department, so I give him a hand. Now the whole darn federal government's threatening to come down on me like a ton of rock. Well, what's G got to do with the defense department? Well, this fellow by the name of Warren wrote to G saying he had a medal coming for his service in World War II. G brought the letter to me and asked me to answer it. I know old G was in the Army for a short time. What do they want to give him, the unit citation, good conduct medal or something? They want to give him the Congressional Medal of Honor. Medal of Honor? Yeah. Yeah, I got the letter back up at the house if you want to see it. This fellow Warren's checking out an old report. He says G took out a whole bunch of Germans by himself. <laughs> you would never hear it from him. Heck, I was only trying to do G a favor. I mean, that's the thanks you get. A bureaucrat spurned is a beast unchained. Huh? You really stepped in it. Oh. I only told him what G told me to tell him without the cuss words. Heck, I can't seem to do anything right anymore. Don't talk like a jerk, Billy. Spare me that at this hour anyway. You think I should just forget it? Billy, the government wants to give G the Congressional Medal of Honor. Well, he doesn't want it. I mean, you talk to him, you being a lawyer and a judge and all. No, no, no chance. No, you just write another letter. Now, be polite. Use your head. Well, I, uh, sort of told G you'd be by to talk to him about it. When did you start managing my affairs? Yeah, he didn't seem to cotton the idea much, neither. Said you haven't been by in 30 years. Didn't expect to see well, you for... Well, that ought to tell you something. I'll... I'll think of something to say to this Waring fella. And what about G? Let's just leave G out of it for right now. Yeah, but... What, Billy? been a long time. You okay, Uncle Albert? I'm fine. I'm just fine, Billy. Good night, Billy. Billy come by? He did. I hope you give him a talking to. What? Laureen, poor young thing. Two children. And that no good Billy catting around on her with that Terry Novice. What are you talking about? Mm-hmm. I wondered if you didn't know. Billy Wendell, Terry Novice, Judge Wesley's secretary? Men are boys till you bury them. Miss Terry Novus is the most competent legal secretary in the courthouse where you haven't set foot for over 20 years. Where do you get this stuff? Bailey Russia, who sings the alto in the choir. He's on the maintenance crew at the courthouse. Your spy network is amazing. I am not getting involved in Billy and Loreen's affairs. 
I hope that doesn't spoil your week. Rowena? Did you know that the government wants to bestow a very high honor on old G. Pennywell? You didn't know that, did you? All I know is that you and Billy's daddy, Will D, rest his soul, were real thick with G when you were Tad's. Making blood packs, tromping the fields and thickets with guns, laying squirrels and pigeons, smoking and speaking vile, no doubt. Just into all manner of perversity that the male of the species is prone to. What about G? Should I know where you'll be? Billy and Lorene's, I gotta pick up something. Go easy with her. I don't know if she knows. Tracy! Christy and the bus is here. Let's go! Here you go. Bottoms up, sport. Oh. Arm. Yeah. Great. I wanted to talk to Dad. Well, you're just going to have to stay in line for your daddy because it's a busy time for him now. Come on. Come on, sweetheart. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, don't forget your lunch. Here. If you're going to go trading your apples for cupcakes, you better make sure you get two for one. Okay? Bye. Take care of your sister, huh? Saw the prison bus leaving just as I arrived. They can hardly wait to get on that bus anymore. Get on out of this house. I've always loved this place. Yeah, you never know it. I see you drive by now and then, but you never stop in. Used to row across the lake here, pick up Billy's daddy. I always wondered how judges got started. Billy said he had a letter from some fella in the Defense Department. A guy named Waring. I'm gonna need it. Yeah. See what I can do. I just saw that yesterday. It's in the desk. I'll get it. I don't understand you not wanting that medal, do you? Nope. None of my business, I suppose. Well, he seems to think Billy's trying to interfere, but that's just not so. I know. Well, Mr. Waring, you've just made one big mistake. You provoked me. Billy said you get along better with G than anyone. Years back. So what happened? Well, nothing happened. Time passes. People change. I don't think so. I think they just get more like themselves. You were always the smart kid in class, weren't you? I faked it. Ah, uh, G was considered part of the family years back. Truly. He knew three generations of Wendells. There was Billy's granddaddy, old W.D. himself. He, he sort of deputized G back then to, uh, oh, show Billy's daddy and me how to hunt and live in the woods and a few other manly things. Yeah, G took his assignment very seriously, very. He was 17, we were 12. <laughs> well, that must have been a trio to be aware of. G's had his niece's little girl staying with him for the summer. 
Oh, she's a pretty little thing. I've been making them some baked goods and bringing them up every week or so. But, you know, she's going to be heading on back to school any day now, and old G, he's going to be all alone again. Where is Billy? Is he up yet? I don't know. Oh. But I'm sure when he does get up, he'll probably come on home. At least to change his clothes. When I retired from the bench, I promised myself I, I wouldn't take on any more problems, make any judgments. Well, I'm sure that comes as a great relief to the criminal population of the state. But Uncle Albert, kinfolk can use a little meddling sometimes, don't you think? It was in Billy's marriage always something everyone took for granted. Well, I never took it for granted. Just for the record. Whenever Billy started getting bored, I tried to coax him to go to Paris or Venice or someplace real romantic, but he never wanted to go. Now, why don't more men just want to run away with their wives? I always wanted to be like Victoria, because she was sharp and easy to laugh with, pretty from morning to night. I'm sorry. If I were younger, I'd give him a whipping. Nah, he's doing that to himself already. Sometimes I wish he'd just act like a skunk about whatever it is he's doing, make it easier to let go. If I have to. Strange how the years cancel out things. Some things. Well, D's long gone. My, oh my, such days they were. Hello there. Hi. Hello, Abyssinia. Been a long while. Richard, why don't you go on in and have your cookie? I'm saving it. Well, you go eat my cookie. You can keep saving yours. Okay. Billy told me you might be by. Well, high time, huh? Gee, I know you had a 
have your own reasons, but wouldn't it be a lot easier all the way around if you just accepted this medal, let it go at that? Life's too short. Seems plenty long enough to me some days. You tell that government man this for me, Albert Sidney. You tell him you saw my face when I said it. I ain't killed a man in over 30 years, but he hadn't ought to try me by stepping foot on my land. Uh, now, gee, that just won't wash. Hey, this letter Billy got it says you wiped out a, a German panzer unit. Wasn't no war of mine. I got drafted. Wouldn't have budged out of here otherwise. If I raise a ruckus, they're just going to insist on a hearing. You want me to tell them the only thing I know is what some lieutenant wrote down 30 years ago? I thought that lieutenant was dead. Till he climbed into that jeep later and took off. <sighs> He'd have held up, I'd have gone on with him. You know I shot expert riflemen in basic training? You'd have guessed that. But they put me in the commissary duty right quick afterwards. Yes, sir. No, sir. I don't believe we got no panatellas. How about one of these here Coronas? White men shoot, black men cook and clean up. I think I might know how you feel, G. Uh, white boys, they pin medals on within the week so the mamas can still brag on them. You, they make wait 30 years. Yeah, I took a little Krupp steel in my back myself in France, G. I, I can still feel it when the weather's just right. No Purple Heart. I don't know if I'd accept it now if they offered it. But the Medal of Honor, you should think twice. You're off by miles. Used to be we could read each other pretty close. I know you come over here as a favor to Billy because I got him in hot water with that government man. Well, the way Billy put it, uh, I was doing you both a favor. Uh, I figure I owe you one. Well, then I guess we can just settle up. Me too, Albert Sidney. Worse than that, I don't even think about you no more. Don't go looking into the bottom of the bowl, Albert Sidney. If I want to remember, I remember you was 12. Got that new Steven single shot 20 gauge. Things like that. You want to settle up? Just get this metal business done with. You know the right words. Tell them, leave me alone. Everything be square then, Albert Sidney. You can just leave me be again.
Albert, why'd you come on in? Oh, I didn't want to interrupt your routine. Well, that never bothered you before. <laughs> Gosh, good to see you. Uh, I didn't think there was anything that separates you from a fishing rod. Well, I'll tell you, Wes. Between all the fishing and the pound of gavel all those years, man's got to rest his arm every now and then. Yeah, I reckon that's right. Did you ask her? Yeah, I asked her. Did she say okay? Well, she didn't say okay. She said she'd be honored. You don't know it, but you've had Terra Nova's buffaloed for a long time. I don't know why. You never handed down a pro-women decision in your whole career. I'm occasionally pro-woman. One at a time. As a class, I've always thought they could hold their own. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to spend the afternoon decreasing the squirrel population out on Bob Dilworth's place. Good to see you, Wes. Thank you. You say this is a petition for a restraining order, Judge Finch? Miss Novus, these are my Albert clothes. Since I'm no longer a man of the cloth, I wonder if I might call you Terry just for the afternoon anyway. May I take that to mean I may relax during dictation? By all means. <laughs> a petition for a restraining order and permanent injunction to the U.S. District Court, Northern District, the state of Georgia. Pennywell versus the U.S. of A. So far, so good. So far, very exciting. Let's go. Paragraph. Oh, the usual opening. Paragraph. The greatest privacy of all is not of a man's lands or his home, but his heart. And it is this sanctuary we beg the court to declare off limits to the government and its agents. The federal agency, which now seeks to publicly invade the petitioner's privacy, for more than 30 years now has either willfully or by clerical oversight decided... Excuse me. I wonder if you might want to use a different word than oversight. It can also mean watchful care, close supervision. A Dalton Briggs almost lost a class action suit last year because that word can mean exactly opposite things. You're right, you're right. Make it official indifference. Yes. Yeah, I wonder if I might suggest something. Of course. The best prime ribs at Gallagher's are the first cuts off the roast. By the time we finish here, they should be just about ready. Uh, do you accept bribes? Certainly. I haven't been to Gallagher's in a year. Good. We best get over there before they have to send somebody after us. I miss your being on the bench. I used to enjoy reading your opinions. Come on now, the primary isn't that good. <laughs> no, I mean it. They always seem to go beyond the case. Like Levis versus Snow. I could just see that lady, old Mrs. Snow, about to lose everything, and you said... We, we have here no contract. Whatever appearances might suggest... The conscience of the court shall not suffer manifest self-interest to make use of the instruments of justice to work in justice. Have you ever thought about studying for the law? No. I thought about studying for the opera. The opera? Mm-hmm. I was a music and voice major at Emory University. When my father got sick, I quit to care for him. After he died, I went to business school instead. Traded Mozart for shorthand. Seems hardly a fair exchange. Oh, I don't know. I've had a good life. With few complaints. I don't think Mozart had an in with the maitre d' at Gallagher's. I can't help but think of that Mr. Pennywell. That poor old man. Oh, gee? <laughs> no, gee may seem old, but... Uh... He's not poor, not in any sense of the word. No, he uh, has his land. He hires a couple of boys off of Billy Wendell's place. It farms a little. No, he's all right. 
Billy Wendell? Yeah. Uh, G uh, was foreman once for Billy's granddaddy. Now, Billy's daddy, Will D, now, he and I used to be very close friends with G a long time ago. Very best of friends. Billy and Laureen, they uh, keep an eye on G. They're good people. No, uh, no, G, he's not poor. He's all right. Well, with friends like you, I'm sure he's going to do just fine. I hope I haven't kept you from anything tonight. Not at all. Well, I apologize. I, I should have brought the car. <laughs> Actually, I'm quite fond of motorcycles. One of the penalties of leaving your 20s behind, no one offers you a ride on a motorcycle anymore. <laughs> yeah, I'm seeing you in a whole new light. Not too bad, I hope. Thanks for dinner. Oh, no, no. You don't have to see me in. Really. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I'm having... A little trouble adapting to this new age. The manners that our mothers insisted on are despised by those women who might be our daughters. Very confusing. I'm not quite sure where I fit in there. Are you? <laughs> Good night. is going fishing. I filed a petition. That's all I can do. Well, you really got to the bottom of it, didn't you? Your voice carries, Rowena. I trained it to carry. When you get your age, you're supposed to lend a hand now and then to pay back some of the air you breathed up all these years. You sure use it plenty. If I was as thick with G. Pennywell as you were, I'd sure want to know why he's turned on the world. That's his business. Well, you got that right. Highest medal the country gives, and he don't want it. Sure nothing strange about that, now, is there? Never thought you were so fond of G these days. I was never fond of him, but that doesn't mean that those who were like you might not make another try at it. You stop dressing like a judge. Now, when you gonna stop acting like one? If she had been a lawyer, Clarence Dare would have had to hit out the men's room. Go oh, for sure, Albert. Go oh, for sure. It was my pleasure, really, Judge Ben. I hope ben. I didn't interfere with any of your regular work. Oh, no matter. I take great pride in being overworked. Finch. Albert Finch. Oh, yes, this is Miss Novus. Michael Waring, Department of Defense. I called Mr. Wendell. He gave me your home phone number. I spoke to your maid. She told me I might be able to find you here. Oh, well, you've had a busy morning. You must be pooped. Mr. Wendell says you represent... That's Wendell. Mr. Wendell says you represent him. My heck, Mr. Ware, and I represent everybody. I even represent Gaspar and Pennywell. That's a blatant conflict of interest. You've got one client oppressing the other, and you're defending him oh, for now, it? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't let my hat and boots fool you, Counselor. Don't tell me about conflict of interest. We'll just see what a judge has to say about that. You just did. Now, might want to take a look at this. You're insane. You better read it. I plan to file it in about 10 minutes. I don't have to read this rubbish. Mr. Waring, I've answered the bell a few more times than you, so let me give you some career advice. If you wait to read that until they serve it on you, you're going to have to drag your carcass back down here, try the rule and lose, and go back up north and explain to your bosses how you fouled up. Anything else career-wise? Yes. 
Get rid of half the junk you're carrying around that satchel and you're going to be lopsided by the time you're 40. Lunch, Miss Nobles. I've been thinking, while I was typing it, you might want to hold off filing it for a few days. A retreat? What kind of strategy is that? Uh, just till this activist from Washington has a chance to think it over. Might in the publicity and ruckus this could cause be harder on that old friend of yours than anything you're trying to save him from. Anyway, think about it. I have to go. Thanks for the lunch offer, but I have to finish these first. Judge Wesley's secretary said I might find you here. Oh? Said your Jeep was still parked outside. Did you read it? Yes, I read it. Good, I'll be happy to drive you to the airport. We've got to think about this, Judge Finch. No, I don't. You do. You're the one came charging down here, threatening one of my clients to pester my other client into accepting some piece of tin you bound determined to force on him. The Medal of Honor is not some piece of tin. Yeah, yes, you're right. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. But G doesn't want it. That's the end of it for me. Well, maybe it shouldn't be. Maybe you're trying to make it a little too easy for yourself, huh? This is a beautifully written petition, but there's something that still bothers me from what Mr. Wendell says, and I gather you agree. Why is Gaspard Pennywell, your client, G, so angry about his country wanting to award him a medal? Maybe he thinks the only reason you want to give it to him at this late date is because he's black. G is an old man. Grudges become your only companion sometimes when you get older. That shouldn't be. River shouldn't flood and good shouldn't die young. Well, suppose you're successful and we're forced to forget all about this metal business. Uh, Mr. Pennywell gets left alone and you get to go back to fishing, I take it. That's about it. Well, give me three days before you file this. You want time to bring up the reserves? No judge in this district is going to grant an order like this without giving the U.S. a chance to cross. You know that. Mr. Pennywell's request not to be awarded the Medal of Honor would be, to say the least, newsworthy. Do you want reporters tramping all over his property, asking him questions? You do have an obligation to protect the privacy of your client, don't you? Three days. I'll give you three days to come up with some better arguments. I want to see a white flag. Some of the language in this petition about this old man, G. I gather he's more than just a client to you. He was a goodly part of my growing up. Did Mr. Waring find you? Yes, he did. We've decided to do it your way. Uh, I'll wait three days before filing. Billy wants to talk to you. Please, just leave me out of this. I'm just not up to coping with modern morality right now. No, please, I asked him to talk to you, and he finally agreed. As a friend. I really don't feel too almighty friendly toward Billy Wendell at this moment. Well, then, as a small favor to me? Billy will be at the Red Barrel around 4.30. Please don't be angry with him. There is no reason to be. To be savagely honest, I'm not feeling overly friendly to either of you right now. I know. Uh, that's why. For your own sake, you, you have to talk to him.
but I can't tell it. It'll wreck her. But she lived through it. <laughs> That's a funny thing to say, ain't it? You're testing me, Billy. Yeah, she told you, didn't she? Terry told you. Told me what? No, it's all right. She said it was up to me, but she told you, and I'm glad. If you can stand it, I reckon Laureen can, too. <laughs> they, uh, they say it gets easier once you know other people know. <laughs> Worst part is believing it yourself. And heck, I can still tote 100 pound bales from can't see to can't see. I'm strong as an ox. But it's true, Uncle Albert. I'm dying. <laughs> Wouldn't hardly know what to look at me, would you? This here leukemia don't show on the outside. I'm dying, sure enough. Yeah, right here before your eyes. You've got to tell Loreen, Billy. Ain't that going to be the final straw now, though? I never did deserve her from the start. Come on now. Ah, oh, you know it, Uncle Albert. Say it if you want. I'm as dumb as cow tracks. I can run 4,000 acres of farm, but you watch hands doing it for 20 years growing up. What's the trick, huh? Nick. Most of them boys that were standing in line for her, and they all got big jobs with banks and oil companies now. You know, gator shoes to match your briefcase. Getting on airplanes all the time to go here and there. You know, I'm all right around here, Uncle Albert. I mean, driving the dirt roads close to home. I, I get out on the blacktop and I can feel it getting away from me. Man, I turn onto one of them concrete interstates and I completely disconnect. Laureen used to talk about going to New York or Paris. Shoot, she may as well be talking about Venus or Pluto. How am I gonna tell the prettiest girl in the county that she's married to a fellow scared to go anywhere where he can't be home but dark? And now this. When the doctors first told me, I said, now that does it. I mean, how am I gonna tell her this? I'm mean, sorry, honey, but after 12 years of mispronouncing words and being a general disappointment, I think I'm going to die on you this year. Sorry. You've still got to tell her. Yeah, I don't think I can take it, Uncle Albert. At least up to, up to now, she might have thought she had man, you know? Well, nothing unmanly about being sick, Billy. You got to leave it up to her. She deserves the truth. If there's some hope, Laureen will find it. Will you, will you tell her, Uncle Albert? Well, please, it's, it's sort of paved the way for me. And she, she thinks the world of you, Uncle Albert. And you'll know just the right thing to say, so I, I don't go in there and kill her with it. Please. <laughs> oh, God, I'm tired. <laughs> Get you some sleep. It's already tomorrow. <laughs>
Doctor's mouths ain't no gospel, Albert Sidney. We got a man at Free Will Church who was told he had to die June 1947. And he's still singing hymns. You remember Helen Lane? She's the nurse down at that clinic where Billy goes. But she only told me yesterday, because I was close to the family and maybe they was going to have a need. Rowena, why do people keep going out of turn like this? No guarantee what a lifetime should be now, is there? Whether well, baby goes, a hundred-year-old man. Both of them had a lifetime in their own way. Now, every time you put on that old bomber jacket that Will D left behind during the war, I wonder if you do it to... You can't feel guilty because you're still alive. You can't do that, Albert Sidney. Smell coffee and biscuits. Well, breakfast is almost ready. You fixing to go over to Lorraine's and tell her the news? I told Billy I would. Well, maybe you could tell her that she and Billy ought to go off someplace, take some time. Tell her I'll look after the little ones for her. They'll mind me. Now, make sure you put that in her mind when you go see her. Where do you find the time? I'll steal some from you. <laughs> in my hour of need? Oh, you're more just lonesome than needy. Come on, now. You notice how early it's getting cold? Didn't used to. When I was a chick, we swam in the lake till November. Yeah, why is it? When we get older, we think it's the weather that's changed. Tell you, Lorene. Well, why would he go to somebody like Terry Novus instead of coming to me? You really want to know? I'm not sure. Uh, Billy. Billy never thought he measured up, really. He thought dying would be just another failure in your eyes. And unmanly. He was thinking about going off and living with his cousin and making to save you the trouble of leaving him, can you imagine? Billy. Men, men tell each other things. They, they don't tell their wives. Don't ask me why. Hey, Billy, he sat up till midnight telling me about Oh, your days in grade school, how he had to go to the principal's office for trying to kiss you on the playground and high school, how he helped you learn your valedictorian speech, college. Told me how proud he was to sign the kids' report cards. Things like that. Well, why wouldn't he ever talk to me about things like that? There was times I would have given up everything just to hear him say it. Oh, for years. For years, I had this idea for Victoria. She knew I loved her. I told her that. I want to do this grander thing for her. I told myself when I retired, I, I'd write a book on legal philosophy. 
sum up the totality of my life and dedicate my whole existence to her. Fast as that, she was gone. Books never have been written. Victoria would have given up everything and slept on dirt just to hear I'd planned such a thing. My word for it, Laureen. Billy loves you more than he's ever going to be able to tell you. She's not there. She's gone away on a long trip. I, I talked to Billy. He asked me to tell Loreen, so I did that. How is she? She took it. Must have been difficult for you. A little tougher on her. I started, started driving around, wasn't going anywhere in particular, and wound up here. Why is that? Migratory instinct, maybe? No. No, I think I wanted to clear up a little matter of my credibility. I never doubted it. I know. It makes it worse. I started strutting around in the glow of your admiration, so to speak. Oh, I could see your look as I'm mounted up. White knight going to rescue some poor old black man. Oh, boy. <laughs> I was prepared to make allowances for slight imperfections, if they arose. Actually, I was trying with a short afternoon chore to make up for years of neglect of an old friend. It didn't work. G saw right through me. Now, I believe G deserves a Medal of Honor and I'm gonna be responsible for his not getting it. Never tell me about judges and right and wrong. I'm going to try again with G. It's just something isn't right. At least I'd like to square myself with him. Well, you've squared yourself with me. Of course, I'm easy. I doubt that. You, uh, you planning on taking a long trip, like you said? As a matter of fact, I started writing a letter to the judge to tell him. Of course, I'm not quite sure where I'm going. You have a need to go someplace? Did Billy tell you about me? He said you were a wonderful friend. I, I believe that. Glad you washed your car. Oh. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> How are you? Need a towel? Oh. <laughs> Do you know where I met Bella Windmill? Well, does it matter? Billy and I share the same doctor. 
That's the only thing I'm ashamed. That and the pain of facing your own mortality and talking about it. I'm, uh, I'm only half the woman that everybody used to look at, right? At first, I wanted to die. And then I almost craved to keep on living. That's what I told Billy he had to do. We talked for hours. You know, when I found out you didn't belong to anyone, I, I was thrilled. And I sank right out of sight. I got 20 years on you. See, it, it doesn't make any difference to me. Please. It isn't some kind of a trade. You know that. Your feelings are just all mixed up right now about Billy, his family, G, and now me. And it does make a difference. It, it makes a difference to me. For months now, there hasn't been a sign of anything. But who knows? Today, I could live forever. When you walked up here, I was 16. I had to be careful you wouldn't hear me breathing. <laughs> Migratory instinct. The wonders of nature. About this, uh, dying business? I'm not real sure whether I'm gonna live or die. But, uh, I'm gonna need your help. Either way. I'll probably say this only once, Billy. So I want you to sit down, listen real close. I would consider it a privilege, Billy Wendell. I love you far too much, you know that? You know who my trouble is, don't you? <laughs> I just never could believe my good luck. Well, there's something a girl can tell herself on a rainy day. <laughs> <laughs> you truly are something, you know that. What? 
I love you. There you go. I filed a petition to keep the government from bothering you, G. I thank you. Well, I don't know that you should. I'm not sure I did the right thing. See, I, I think you deserve the medal and more. I don't quite know why you don't want to accept it, but I respect your wishes, if that's what your wishes are. All I'm saying is that, well, if you're not wanting to take this medal as Anyway, mixed up with the way you feel about me and why, then I wish you'd think twice about it. G? G, I'm gonna say this, so you might as well listen. That day, old W.D. died, and I was home from Fort Benning. You and I were the only ones in the bedroom when he went. I don't know how that happened to be, but there we were. I think that his going hurt you more than anybody alive. I could see it in your face. I wanted to step over and put my arms around you right then. I would have. I would have a year earlier, but... A white boy can hug a black man who's a friend. A white man's got trouble with it. You taught me how to be a man, and there I was. An officer and a gentleman. I didn't move. Sorry, don't say it, G, but it's the only word I got. All I'm asking is, don't turn down the Congressional Medal of Honor, because people like me wear the uniform of an army that treated you like kitchen head. It's got nothing to do with you, Albert Sidney. Just let it be. Well, I'm not going to leave it be, G. What is it? Careful, Albert Sidney, careful. All that citation says was that you got shot in the leg. That's enough now. A shot in the leg wouldn't slow you down, you toughest cypress. <clears throat> ah, you see? You see? You can hardly stand. Now, what happened? Something happened you're not telling. What is it? Talk to me, G! Him, like you say, with medics and all. Almost didn't see me. I give him a wave. You made all this? Just you? Was nobody else. I need help, Lieutenant. Yes. 
Yes, of course. Here's your help. This here is what you get when you empty a full Tommy gun on a man. Pretty, ain't it? This wasn't done by no Germans. This was done by a pretty, smiling, blonde, American lieutenant. Gee. Oh, gee. all this. You made all this. You see that? Otto Scorzini, Lieutenant Colonel, SS. He's the one who led the paratroopers to free Mussolini. He was hand-picked to put together this special unit of SS troops in Belgium. All of them were able to speak fluent English? Well, you see, that's what put me on to it. There's English, and then there's English. But there's no American that I know of from any part of the country who would say, you made all this. Let me ask you a question. You've known this man all your life. How come you didn't know about any of this before? That's between him and me. This is Michael Waring, a man from the Defense Department. Uh, I apologize for encouraging him to step on your land, but uh, we've discovered something I think you ought to know. Well, we are, but Sydney. So, gee, I was just a young boy when you taught me things often are not what they first appear to be. So please, uh, would you look at this a minute? Just for a minute, I think you'll see what we mean. Gee, in the winter of 44, around Christmas, a bunch of uh, German SS troops, they set out to infiltrate American positions and uh, tie up with von Rundstedt's offensive. Gee, they were wearing American uniforms. Some of them posing as MPs, going around giving fake orders, wrong directions, shooting up scattered troops before they get back to their units. See, we think that a jeep load of Germans rode into your camp looking for any sign of life. 
you waved to him. Then the lieutenant said, you made all this, not you did all this, or not even you killed all these. They were Germans? I know on its own it's pretty thin, G. But taken with the rest of it, it's probably true. Now, not that it's going to help you walk any better, but uh, I think it's almost certain you were shot by a German, not an American. They were Germans? Mr. Pennywell, if I can ask the obvious question, did you tell anybody about what happened after you were finally taken to the hospital? Yeah, I told them. These officers mostly, I was a black mess private. That's all they saw when they looked at me, a black man out of his head in pain. I tell them, they give me morphine and tell me the pain was making me crazy. Kept on trying to tell them. They said they'd take away my morphine if I didn't shut up. It was a German. If you don't mind, Mr. Pennywell, I'd like to stay in touch with you. I'll let you know when you can come up to Washington for the presentation by the president. Oh, I ain't going to Washington. All this still don't make no difference. I don't understand. No disrespect to your medal, son. But see, I keep remembering all those young German boys I killed that day. They are just kids. They come looking to fight the Americans, and the only one left had an apron on, and he was black. They just stood there, like deer caught in the headlights. And I killed them. I don't want no medal for that, you see. I truly don't. Sorry if I seemed a little one-dimensional about all this. Uh, I had no idea Mr. Pennywell had such private reasons for not wanting any hero's medal. Oh, by the way, uh, my other client, who you were getting official with, Billy Wendell, he's fighting leukemia. I wish you could drop him a note from Washington saying that the government's sorry they bothered him and wishes him a speedy recovery. You think you could do that? I'll do that. i tell you what I've been thinking. The least I can do is arrange for Mr. Pennywell to receive the Purple Heart. I'm sure he'd appreciate that. Me, I gotta figure out some way to patch up a lifetime. You really love that old man, don't you? Yeah. But you shouldn't make too much of that. Despite what's come between, we're pieces of one another. We're part of everything here. 
Black bro Wiener there. The one you mistakenly referred to as my maid that first day, remember? I don't know exactly how to describe what Rowena is to me. She's been wise to my foibles, and me only half wise to hers for more than 50 years. It's 200 seasons. You believe it? 200 seasons. Well, you take care. Maybe I'll see you in court someday, huh? No, no, I'm retired again. <laughs> I'd pity the next guy who believes that. That looks nice on you. <laughs> Mike says for my wounds. Well, we're all wounded some way, I guess. Did you say Mike? Yeah, you know, Mike Waring. I didn't know you were such fast friends. Well, that's how he signed the letter. I thought it was kind of nice. Bright young fella. He sent this along, too. This one here is yours. He told me to give it to you when I found the right time. He says it's for the shrapnel you took in your back in France. Mike has a sense of poetic justice, doesn't he? I guess. Who'd have thought we'd both have purple hearts one day, eh? Yeah? Yo, gee, I got to thinking. I could probably set your mind at rest about something years ago. When I got back from overseas after Will D, I. I went by and paid my respects to Mrs. Wendell, but I, I never just turned left and walked down the lane to ask you how you felt about it. Rose the same left both ways. I could have come your way if I'd been as big as I always let on to be. You know, every time I hear an airplane, I think about Will D getting shot down over there. You've been looking kind of down lately, Albert Sidney. Oh, no, I'm fine. Too much fishing alone. Gets to be a lonesome thing. Well, I'm not lonesome. You? You got an extra seat in that boat? What? Why don't you come by Saturday next? Come fishing with me early, when we can still see our breath. Don't hurt to know you're breathing, that's sure. Feels good to be forgetting a few things. Lighten the load, so to speak, don't you think? for leave of absence, said uh, she'd write if it's going to be any more than that. Well... What'd you do, Al? Make her a better offer? I'd like to think so. Wes, you think the federal government could make me the loan of an envelope?
Hi, darling. How are you, Uncle Albert? Rowena was wonderful with the kids. What'd they say? So far, so good. Is that how Washington's doctors talk now? So far, so good? The exact medical term is holding our own. Ah, that's great. Yeah, well, it's something. It's amazing how much more hope there is when there's two of you. How are you doing? Oh, you know, I'm holding my own. So far, so good. Looks familiar. Uh, Terry Nobis. She came by to see you, so I let her wait by the lake. I suppose that makes it all right. Well, if it didn't, I wouldn't have. Now, I don't intend to breathe my last washing out your socks and doing your dishes, Albert Sidney. There's a limit, you know. No, I expect you'll go singing hymn number 292 at the Free Will Church, all six verses. Don't mock. That would suit me just fine. I'm not mocking. I meant it as a compliment, truth. Uh, you don't really mind me letting her wait, do you? No. No, I don't mind, Rowena. You've always known the right thing to do, the time to do it. I don't think I ever really thanked you for that, Rowena, for all of it. Sure you yeah. have. You just don't remember. I decided it was my day to wear it. I hope that's all right. You get more beautiful by the day. I don't know how long I'm going to be able to stand this. Well, mister, we're going to find out. 